All right, in this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to create vendor credits and apply them to open bills. There's a lot of stuff to cover in here. <laughs> so first of all, uh, what is a vendor credit, right? Uh, so basically it is when a vendor sends you a bill, right? They're charging you for either product or services that you've used of theirs. Now, if for any reason you return the product or you never received the services or the services weren't great, then we would enter into the system or hopefully they would send to us a vendor credit, right? So it's them saying that they are going to credit you back on your account with them for the product that was unused, etc. Okay, so just creating a vendor credit from scratch, you actually go to the enter bills area in QuickBooks. Okay. And when you're creating a credit, there's these two little buttons up here and you want to say credit that switches it over to being a vendor credit. All right, and then we fill it in just as if it were any other bill. So I say credit, I'm gonna get a credit from Allen's Truck Sales. I use tab, get to the date, right today, 2020. <laughs> Reference number, 5478, class, um, so I can give it a different department, credit amount that they're giving to us, any kind of memo, And then we can put it to an expense account or an item account. Okay, so I can say this is a return on, I don't know, car repair and maintenance. And then again, I can associate with the class. If we are doing job costing, of course, you can associate this cost with a customer as well. And then if we're doing it on the items tab, kind of similar thing. We can choose what item, which service we're returning, uh, what inventory part we're returning to them, have quantity, cost, amount, class customer, etc. Okay, if you do market billable in here as well, so watch future videos on job costing. If you do market billable in here, it will show up on an invoice as a negative amount. So it will flow through for time and expenses just like any other bill will. Okay, so once I create the credit, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Once I create the credit, then if I go look in my AP Aging Summary, for all star truck sales, you'll see in here I have a negative amount now, right? So in this case, I don't have any bills to apply this to. So I would leave this credit in there until I have a bill to apply it to in the future, right? The next bill I'm gonna get for them, okay? So that's one way to put in a credit. I think that the easiest way to put in a credit memo though usually, because usually it has to do with some bill that we're paying right? So I usually go into either my vendor center or through the pay bills area. I find the original bill. So I'm going to go ahead and choose just this one random bill here. And I open it up. Okay. Now why do I do it this way? Um, it's because it already has a whole bunch of information filled in for me. This one's not a good example because it doesn't have a reference number, but let's, you know, I'll just stick one in there for now and save it. Okay, so I pull up the original bill and then I'm going to come up here to create a copy. So what that does is it duplicates the original bill. And of course I don't want to say save here because I'm not going to save it as a bill. I want to click the credit little button up top here so that it's now a credit memo or a vendor credit as QuickBooks calls it and put in the amount that they're crediting back to me. Okay. Now the reason I like doing that is again, the reference number comes across, any memos I had would come across, customer job information, if this were tied to an item or several items, those would all fill in for me automatically and I could just delete the rows right, that I did not need. So it's just a much faster way of entry um, for me. And usually I'll do something like instead of one, two, three, two, one, CM, I'll put a CM at the end so we know it's credit or sometimes they'll actually give you a different reference number on the vendor credit that they issue to you. Okay, so again, once I hit save here, AA Tech Consultants now has a credit. So now once we have those credits created in QuickBooks, we need to apply them to bills. 
So first of all, there is a preference around this, so you want to make sure that you have this preference set appropriately. So under Edit and Preferences and then under Bills, there is a company preference that says Automatically Use Credits. Uh, so I'll show you what that does. If you don't like this, you can come in and turn it off here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go on down after I have my bills all entered and pay my bills. So what happens is notice that when I first come in here, I don't see credits anywhere. I mean, I see a little grayed out button down there, but it doesn't show them to me kind of like a list of bill and credit in here. So the way you see what credits you have available to you is you have to click on the actual bill or the vendor that you're paying, right? So once I click on it, even though I haven't check marked it yet, then it shows me, oh, I have a credit available for this vendor. And then if I click on a different vendor, I have a credit available for that vendor as well. All right. Now it doesn't automatically apply it here, but as soon as I hit that check box here on the side, it will automatically pick it up and apply it to that particular bill. So that can be helpful because I have had customers in the past who they, uh, you know, leave the preference unchecked and then they click on, they go through, okay, what bills do I have to pay? Check, check, check. And they don't even realize what credits they have outstanding because they're just going check, check, check through, right? It goes through really quickly. Um, so sometimes that is helpful. However, if you have a customer who, or a vendor, I'm sorry, who you buy a lot from, right? And you need to apply this credit to a specific bill, right? So like down here, all-star truck sales, I have that $450. Maybe I didn't want to apply it to this bill. Maybe I wanted to apply it to a bill coming in the future. So if you have that situation, you definitely want to leave that box unchecked in preferences. Okay. So let me go ahead and cancel out of here and I'm going to now go in and uncheck that box. So you can see what that looks like. So again, vendors, pay bills or right here on the home screen, pay bills. So now this time when I come in here, I can still see that credit down here, but when I check off, it doesn't automatically pull that credit. I have to then come down here and hit set credits, choose the credit that I want to apply to this bill, and I can choose the amount used, right, in the non grayed out or in the white columns. That means it's editable. So I can choose to uh, partially apply if I want to. But now I applied that credit to this bill because I chose to, uh, and then I say pay selected bills. Now this one has a full amount, right? $500 is due, $500 credit, so no amount to pay. On Valley Yellow Pages down here, I have a $900 bill and an $850 credit. So if I check this one off, it picks up, obviously I'm about to pay $900, but then I'm gonna apply the credit. Now it's showing I just am going to cut a check for $50, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and assign, say I'm going to assign the check number, pay the selected bills. It asks me what, you know, what check number I wrote out to them. Now notice it only picks up the Valley Yellow pages because we're not cutting a check for AAA Tech Consultants, okay? We, in the system it actually kind of does, but it's a $0. So then it applies those, so I have a $0 one here and a 520 or check number 520 for $50 here. And then when I go to pay bills, those bills are off my list. All right, that's vendor credits.